to the luminous love light of the one I'm opening up in sweet surrender to the luminous love light of the one I'm opening I'm opening I'm opening I'm opening I'm opening up in sweet surrender to the luminous love light of the one I'm opening up in sweet surrender to the luminous love light of the one. I'm opening, I'm opening, I'm opening, I'm opening. To the luminous love light of the one I'm opening up in sweet surrender To the luminous love light of the one I'm opening I'm opening I'm opening Good morning, and welcome to, <laughs> it's a good thing today is about joy. Welcome to the Unity of Louisville, where our mission is to transform ourselves and the world through love, and I'm Reverend Ray Nelson, I'm one of the ministerial team here, and it is an honor and privilege on this beautiful Kentucky day with so much going on to have you here with us. If you're watching us online, welcome to you as well. And let us go ahead and open in prayer. So let's just take a moment and settle into our seats and get comfortable, allowing ourselves to become present. We set aside all that happened to get us here and all that we're doing later to allow ourselves that permission to just be here and present. So we take that sacred breath and allow that breath to center ourselves. And as we center ourselves, we connect with that divine power within us, that divine presence that lies at the heart of all of creation. And when we connect with that presence, that connection streams out from us and connects to all those that are here and all those who are out into the world because we are all part of that divine one. So as we settle in, become present, we become open and receptive to that living spirit of truth, that spirit of love, that spirit of joy, that spirit of grace. And so from that place of gratitude for being in the presence, we say, thank you, God. And can we say that together? Thank you, God. One more time. Thank you, God. And one last time. Thank you, God. So, all right. So we'd like to acknowledge our volunteers who are here. We are ushers and greeters. Robert on the soundboard. James on our PowerPoint. Um, we do have a change in our schedule. Alex Rolleder is no longer was not able to be with us today, so we have no longer no longer able to be with us today. Um, so we have Zelda Spalding. Woohoo! I is going to do our daily word. And uh, Reverend Valerie is going to be doing our meditation. Our song team is Phil, Deb, and Judy. Our special music is Melba Harris. I think that's everybody. All right. Please stand and join us for our opening song. is 
the song that my heart always sings. You are the melody. You are the melody. My God. There is a song that my heart always sings. You are the melody. You are the melody. The harmony. song that my soul always sings. You are the melody. You are the melody. My God, there is a song that my soul always sings. You are the good I sound up here next to these guys so. <laughs> and you never will because I'll keep my mic off um, so unity is a prosperous compassionate community seeing the unlimited possibilities in all people we see the one is to acknowledge anybody who's here for the very first time. And if you would raise your hand as I raise mine, we can just get you a little gifts. So we have a couple down here and one over here. Okay, so just keep your hand up for a second so the ushers can get to you. And they have a packet of information for you. And they also have a candle. And the packet of information has some information about the Unity Church. It also has a lot of information about the Unity Movement. The candle is a gift from the congregation so that they can recognize you after the service and answer your questions and just be really nice to you because you've never been here before, so you may not know where to get a cup of coffee, where the bathrooms are, anything like that. Just be nice to you. And there's an affirmation on that candle that says, when you light this candle, remember that that Christ light already shines within you. And all that is important, but we want you to know and we want everyone to know that wherever you are on that spiritual journey, you're welcome here. We welcome you, we bless you, we behold the living presence 
of God in you. Can we welcome our first time guests? And as that welcoming, inclusive community, we like to welcome each other. And, I'll in, and as uh, Chuck Fulner says, this is the fastest two minutes in football. So uh, you can do it in a variety of ways. You can do it with a hug. You can do it with a handshake. You can do it with a blessing or a wave. But we always give people permission to be in charge of their body. So always ask before you hug. Let's greet each other. You are the melody, you are the melody, the harmony, the music of a song. You are the melody. and you may be seated. We like to anchor our service with a couple affirmations. This month we are using for our first affirmation, our affirmation of inclusion, which is one of our core values. And the theme is families. So we will say this one together, together. All families are valued and welcome here. And then this is our generosity affirmation, which we will say, say with much zeal and enthusiasm. Together, I am an exuberant, joyful expression of spirit, participating fully in the principle of generosity. That's a great affirmation. All right, so as we move now into the more meditative portion of our service with the singing of the Lord's Prayer, there will be some time of silence at the conclusion of the Lord's Prayer as our oneness blessers and energy workers bless all those who are gathered and those who are online.
Amen. Today's daily word is healing for Sunday, September the 22nd. I affirm wholeness and I am healed. The Gospel of Matthew, Mark, and Luke tell the story of a woman who believed she would be healed if she could touch the hem of Jesus' cloak. The woman, according to the story, had been ill for 12 years. Seeing her, Jesus said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. The woman's faith allowed wholeness to shine through the illness she was healed. As an emanation of God, Wholeness is my birthright. Wholeness maintains my body, mind, and emotions in perfect balance. I release any belief in illness, lack, or limitation, and focus my faith on the wholeness that has always been present. I affirm wholeness, and I am healed. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! <laughs> Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, take heart. Matthew to be supported by the seat beneath you 
to relax. And take time to rejuvenate your soul, to rejuvenate the child presence within you. Seeing that presence filled with joy. Moving in and through every cell of our body. Every molecule that we are is filled with that everlasting joy. We choose joy right here, right now, as we pray. When those challenges come up, remember the truth of who you are, a joyful, living, loving spirit and expression of the divine. That is your truth. And it will carry you through the darkest time. to remember that special joyful moment in your life and hold it dear and near your heart allowing that zeal and enthusiasm to be the biggest part of your being Carry that joyful expression with you wherever you go on this journey. Remember it in those moments of challenges and make the choice to be that joyful, enthusiastic soul that is here to live and live out life fully, present in everything you do. And we thank you. Thank you, Spirit, for the joy in all of our lives and in the world. And so it is. Amen. Joyful, 
Joyful we adore you, God of glory, God of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before you, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of pain and sadness drive the dark of doubt away giver of immortal gladness fill us with the light of day your rays, stars and angels sing around you, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow flashing Singing bird and flowing fountain call us to rejoice in you. You are giving and forgiving, ever blessing. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. You are creator, Christ our brother. We all live as love divine. Teach us how to love each other and lift us to the joy divine. Everyone join the happy chorus which the That was beautiful, Melba. Thank you. Let's give her another hand. That was beautiful. <clears throat> I'm 
So today we're going to continue our Legends of Unity, and I'm going to focus on Mae Rowland. So I'm going to ask, how many people have ever heard of Mae Rowland? A few, okay. So Mae Rowland started working at Silent Unity when right out of high school and took over as director of Silent Unity in 1916. She was the second director of Silent Unity after Myrtle Fillmore. She held that position for 55 years until she retired in 1971. That means she was director of Silent Unity during two world wars, the Korean War, most of the Vietnam War, the Great Depression, the Civil Rights Movement, the Vietnam War challenges, and held the consciousness of truth and peace through that all. In her book, Dare to Believe, she states, the world can be united through loving, understanding, and warm hearts. People at home and abroad respond to love. Frequently, we speak of giving someone a blessing. A blessing is the essence of the highest spiritual realization we can give another. And we can give that blessing silently or we can speak it out loud. And in her book, Dare to Believe, she says, when you dare to believe, you can manifest anything you seek. When you dare to believe, you can create from that inner place of that spiritual connection. I love May Rowland. I loved, when you go to Unity Village, when I go and meet the students even now, we, I get to meet the students in the May Rowland room. There's a picture of Charles Fillmore giving the silent Unity service that we do here at nine o'clock in the morning. Every day, Unity Village shut down except for one or two people would stay on the phones and everybody would gather at the Fillmore Chapel and he would sit what is now the May Roland Room giving the, giving the meditation and holding that place of peace and serenity for all time. They don't do it anymore, but we continue that, that, that tradition here. So today we're going to talk about her topic that she wrote on making joy a habit. So today, if I crack up laughing a few times, it's because today's about joy. Joy is the infallible sign of the presence of God. Pierre Teilhard de Chardin wrote that, and I believe that. It is the infallible presence of the sign of the presence of God. Joy is a divine gift from God. In Isaiah 55, it says, You shall go out in joy and be led back in peace, and the mountains and the hills before you will burst into song, and all the Fields and trees shall clap their hands. Instead of a thorn shall come up a cypress. Instead of a briar shall come up a myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for memorial everlasting sign that you shall not be cut off. You shall go out in peace and come back in joy. It is a sign of God that you are living in the presence when you are living from a consciousness of joy. Joy is so important to me, it's one of my core values. It's probably my impo most important core value, but I'll get more of that later. And I will say, joy does not always come easily. Sometimes we're out of sorts, and it seems a struggle to get to that place of joy. But joy will bring me back, and we're going to talk about how to cultivate that. But so often, external circumstances seem to dictate how I am or how we act in the world. Our circumstances, our conditions seem to tell us, well, there's nothing to be joyful about, and we buy into it and we live from that. 
She writes, many people are unhappy because they have not yet learned the art of living happily and joyously in spite of conditions and circumstances. She doesn't say deny and pretend that the circumstances don't exist. She never says that. She says we can transcend them and live joyously anyhow. In unity, we don't teach, we deny the facts. Facts are rocks are hard, water is wet, that is a fact. But the facts don't dictate to us, don't dictate to me how I am in the world unless I let them. And it's all about cultivating a consciousness of joy and making it a habit through deliberative and intentional mind training. Because it all starts in the mind anyhow. It all starts in the mind. When I'm in drama, the drama is out there, but what am I making up in here is causing me the problem. The Buddhists don't say that our problem is the external world is causing us problems. The Buddhists say the problem is the external world is doing something and I either resist it or I fight it or I run from it or I freeze. So the first thing to do is you notice your reaction. Am I being in a joyful place? Yesterday, I had way too much to do. I had to do a wedding over at um, Highland Baptist Church. Now, for those of you who know, they also had Gay Pride Festival one block up from Highland Baptist Church. The Pride Festival started at noon. My wedding was at five. So parking was a, and traffic was a, difficult, external to me, and was causing me some disruption in my joy until I just let it go and decided I will get where I'm getting when I get there, and I can't get there any sooner. And then all the traffic moved out of the way because my joy was complete and I no longer had to be resisting it. So we start with noticing and noticing your tendency to react. What's your triggers? Just notice what they are. You can't practice or change something if you don't first become aware of it. It's not the circumstances or the conditions that's causing your pain. It's your reaction to the circumstance or condition that's causing your pain. It's the thought about it that is causing your pain. And for those of you who've seen it, the simple thing to do is what Bob Newhart said in his brilliant SCTV um, piece, stop it, just stop it. You can notice it and you don't have to make a story up about it. You don't have to argue with the story, which is just another way of causing your pain, or you don't have to judge yourself because you had a story, which is another way of causing your pain. You can just go, I notice I'm anxious and I'm gonna stop being anxious and move back into that place of joy. So for me, one of the reasons I said core, joy is one of my core values because it's my talisman. It's where I know if I'm not living from joy, when I become aware that I'm not living from joy, I know I got something to do. I usually know that there's a shadow lurking behind me that is biting me in my derriere. That was a polite way of saying that word. There's usually a shadow that I haven't confronted yet, even if that's a shadow that's only a moment. I have to become aware of that, and when I do, it's my joy that's pointing in that direction. You're not living in joy now, so I know I have something, something to work on. I use my joy, or lack of joy, to, to get me there. Second, an attitude of gratitude. You cannot be in joy if you're not grateful. Try it. Try being just judgmental, angry, projecting everything. The world kind of is, I can't say. There's all sorts of words I'm not able to say that are in my head. Um, and try being a place of joy when you're there. You can't get there. It's always easy. It's not always easy to practice that, but put your attention towards cultivating a gratitude. 
Now, gratitude is not spiritually bypassing or what I call metaphysically malpracticing yourself. Um, Martha said this a few weeks ago. Everything is not good. I'm sorry, everything is not good. There are things that are just not good. We'll just say that. There are things that just aren't good. I'm sorry, I've said this before. My mother dying was not good. Goods available. And, and I've, I struggled with this for a while because one of the first classes I took when I came into uni about 97 was a Bible class. And one of the first things we did was we read out of 1 Thessalonians. And it says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I didn't even get to the pray without ceasing. I didn't even argue with that one yet. I'm like, I'm not giving thanks for everything. That's ridiculous. I argued with it and had to come to the conclusion that, that I was misunderstanding it. It didn't say give thanks for all things. It says give thanks in all things. All things have at their heart a spiritual lesson. When I'm willing to not resist it, not bypass it, not malpractice it, but just allow it to be. And no, my mom dying was not good. My mom not suffering was good. My memory of my mother is good. My ability to draw upon her wisdom and all that she did for me is good. So I had to move to a place, and from that place, I can move to a place of thanksgiving in all things, not for all things, and live a life joyous. The third thing is cultivate a constitute of gratitude by picking things you can be grateful for. You can be grateful every day. There is no time that you can't be grateful. When somebody says, oh, there's nothing working in my life. Really? So you're here. So if something worked, your car worked. I'm grateful for my car. The birds are working. When you've changed your focus away from what's wrong to what's right. I love, in fact, I posted on Facebook last night about 10 o'clock at night. It said, nothing earth shattering. Lights are off. Light jazz on the, on the radio. And my cat's on my lap purring. Bliss comes in many forms. Wasn't that my day was perfect, but that moment was filled with a bliss and a joy that transcended most moments. So you cultivate it by, by getting a new perspective and changing where you put your attention. Another way, or Martha actually said this, at least just be okay with whatever it is because otherwise you're just fighting the universe. You know, things are what they are, and you can be miserable in it, and it still is what it is, or you can be not miserable in it, and then it doesn't seem as big a big deal. But, so the fourth way is to cultivate joy is just to act joyful. So most of you know Darren, right? Or many of you know Darren. Darren, Darren is a longtime member here, a good friend of mine, and he had surgery on Tuesday and then had to go back in on surgery for Friday. He had two different issues. So on Tuesday when we were, he was preparing to go in, we weren't sitting there in so serious, so drama. We were telling jokes. We were keeping everything like, do you know if you have an iPhone and you say, Siri, I am your father. The iPhone says, no, it can't be. It's not possible. Luke from Star Wars, for those who aren't Star Wars fans. And then at the end of that, she goes, hee hee. So we kept doing knock-knock jokes. And I pulled up some really bad ones. If attacked by a gang of clowns, go for the juggler. We just, we were laughing so hard. I, was, I thought the doctor was like, am I in the right room?
for surgery. So we cultivate it by just acting joyful. I've always loved this saying, and we're going to act on this. Sing like no one's listening, love like you've never been hurt, dance like no one's watching, and live like it's heaven on earth. I was driving into work a couple weeks ago, and there was a guy in my rearview mirror, and he's like one. <laughs> he didn't care who watched him. I tried to slow down and let him get next to me so I could go and then crank mine up and do it with them, but you know, he, we just couldn't match up. And it was like, he didn't care. He was singing and dancing like, like it didn't matter. I have this habit, I pick my old 19-year-old cat up and she loves it. I pick her up and I hold her and I put on some dance music and I dance around the apartment with her. Now a young cat runs, because she doesn't want to be danced with, but I put on like disco music and we dance away and, you know, I do keep my microphone off when the singers are singing, but so most of our troubles that we ex that exist in life are temporary. They're not going to last. I love the saying, this too shall pass, and most of them pass really quickly. And yet, while we're in them, we give 100% of our energy to it. It's like, it's the only thing that's happening in the universe is this thing. And then the universe is just doing what the universe does. And, and then the next moment, it's like, it reminds me of the little kids who, they're in a full-blown meltdown because they're completely present to it. And then like 10 seconds later, they're off doing the next thing and well, what were you upset about? I wasn't upset, I don't know, they just, but we don't do that, we hang on. And it's like if we just cultivate that thing and give our mental energy to living a life of joy. Do you wanna see if you can, if that'll come up? And so we're gonna dance and we're gonna sing and we're gonna move. It's on Firefox, it's right there, on Firefox. Now, maximize it. Maximize it, and then start it. There you go, and start it. And I'm gonna invite you all to stand, because none of you can dance any worse than me. Anybody who wants to be on camera, you're welcome to come up on the platform too.
46 countries in 18 months. And he says, it's not a big deal. I mean, it's not world peace. It's not going to change the planet. But maybe it does. When people get together without any filters, and all the people just get together with no judgment, and we just dance, and we just sing. Thank you. I love you. I bless you. I behold the living presence of God in you. Well, you just thought it was time to sit down. <laughs> How wonderful. Thank you, Reverend Ray, for all of that. Wow. What energy we are sharing with our world as we walk out this door. Um, Judy and I are going to share with you now a song that I wrote years ago, but I wrote it for all ages to sing and enjoy and to feel it, to sing it. Feel free to stand if you want. Feel free to dance some more if you want. You'll catch on to the words, don't worry, but the point of this song is my dream is that my world, my world is full of joy, full of love, full of fun, full of happiness, full of peace. Please join us. It is filled with joy. Thank you, Melba. Thank you, Ray. What a great night. What a great day. I don't know if it's day or night. I did Reiki all weekend. I'm lucky I'm standing. Yes, it is. So now as our ushers come forward, we'll um, get ready to give our gifts of love and joy. So we take them into our hands and infuse them with all of our blessings for this community, for this beautiful city, for the world. We see these gifts flowing in and through Unity of Louisville, blessing each of us, our families, and sending it out into the world as it ripples back to us a thousandfold. As we say together our prosperity proclamation, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all I receive.
And now as we send these out into the universe, let's send it with our prosperity affirmation. We are stewards of divine abundance. We give and receive with gratitude, and so it is. So we have some announcements. The first one is there's an insert for our 109th anniversary celebration. We are doing a um, program, and if you want to put in a momentum, a memory, or advertise in some way, please let Jean Binkner know. The other thing is on October the 6th, we have a soul recovery workshop with Esther. And that she's really good. She's been here before. And I invite you all to stay for that workshop. It's a very enlightening experience. And then the next thing is, as the youth come up, I'm going to make this announcement. Okay, so we teach the children to live in the moment, right? Isn't that what we're supposed to do? And then when they do it, and they want to do a spaghetti fundraiser next Sunday, <laughs> so I'm telling you all, our youth will be doing a spaghetti dinner after church next Sunday. It's not in the bulletin, um, which I understand, and... Thank you all, and come on. So be prepared to eat spaghetti next week. There will be gluten-free, there will be vegetarian, there will be anything that you can think of. Jean is actually um, assisting them with the cooking process. Our teens are getting ready to go on retreat this month. Both our unit teens will go week after next, and our YOU, the teenagers, will go the last week in October. a quick announcement because Val said everything I was pretty much going to say. <laughs> Thank you. You said it made my job a little bit easier. <sighs> so the reason why we're doing this spaghetti dinner is because, you know, we really do love all of these teens. Like this, <laughs> I don't know if they would use the same words, but I would say these retreats are transformative. If you can experience like whatever the in most intensive class you've ever had here before, that over the course of multiple days with like a hundred people and just all that energy, it's very overwhelming, but in a very positive way. So we just want to see them grow their own spirituality through these events. So I love you guys so much. And so we just invite you to come over. If you can't, you're not available, we'll take donations today or just whatever you feel called to do. Just we want to support our kids and we want to feed you because we know in the universe it's give and receive. So we want to give back to you guys too. We do teach the laws of unity here. So there you go. All right. And now for our prayer for protection, please stand. Together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And now for our peace song.